Welcome, welcome students, welcome panelists. Um, thank you for attending today's Transfer Tuesday, UH Mono Transfer Workshop. Today, um, I will just be introducing um, the counselors who coordinated um, these series and also the two special guests that we have for today. Um, again, feel free to put your questions in chat and we will um, address them um, at the end of each of the um, speakers' um, presentations. So we have, um, I just want to introduce Amy. Amy McKee is a UH Manoa Transfer Specialist. Um, I'm Laurie Labarios. I'm one of the counselors at Leeward. And we also have Jordan Luton, who's our Leeward Community College Online Counselor. She'll be jumping in a little later. So we were um, very fortunate to have um, academic advisor Carissa Guzman here from the School of Travel Industry Management. So she will be doing her presentation first, and then we'll address any kinds of questions you may have um, at the end of first session, about 25 minutes later. And then Scheidler College of Business, um, our admission, the admission advisor, Claire Fujioka Sok, will also be sharing. So, so happy to have them. And then we can go to the next slide. Mm. So before we get started today, we just wanted to share with you folks a little bit of information about the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So UH Manoa was founded in 1907 and is considered a land, sea, space, and sun grant institution. We offer over 100 undergraduate majors for students to choose from, as well as some graduate and professional degree programs, including law, medicine, business, social work, education, and engineering. Um, we are the flagship campus of the University of Hawaii system, a Research One institution, an NCAA Division One school, and we strive towards being a native Hawaiian place of learning. If you're interested in transferring to UH Manoa in the future, we'd love for you to consider joining the Ka'i'i'i program. The Ka'i'i'i program is a partnership between UH Manoa and the community colleges and offers the students proactive academic advising, waiving the application fee to UH Manoa. Um, you have the ability to take Manoa classes while you're still at the community college, and you can register early when you do transfer to Manoa. To be eligible to join the program, you do need to have at least 24 transferable credits, a 2.0 GPA, and have at least one more semester remaining at the community college. Um, I'll drop some more information into the chat, but please feel free to message me if you have any more questions about the program. Um, we'll go ahead and transfer to Claire. Claire, are you ready? Yep, I am okay. ready. This is Claire, thank you. All right. All right. So hello, everyone. My name is Claire. Um, I'm the undergraduate admissions advisor with the Shallow College of Business. And as Carissa mentioned, um, I'm the contact for all the BBA majors. Um, first off, thank you, everyone, for putting your introduction into the chat. Um, I'll be sure to kind of highlight some of the uh, majors and, and um, interests that you are that you expressed. All right, so to start off, um, so our BBA programs, namely our international business program is ranked 15th in the nation um, in this year of 2020. And this is according to the US News and World Report. Um, we are AACSB accredited and that's Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business. And this is actually the highest uh, business accreditation that um, a school can receive. So we have consistently um, demonstrated um, really great instructors, professors, um, our professors are all active in their research fields. And so, but the instruction that you get in the classroom is representative of the lots and lots of publishing um, that all of our professors do. So Shadler has eight different majors, accounting, entrepreneurship, finance, human resource management, international business, management, management information systems, and marketing. And so students are more than welcome to double, triple, even quadruple um, majors within the business realm. So for example, someone expressed an interest in accounting and HR. So this is definitely possible. And so how the double major would work is you would do 
the six accounting courses, and then you would add on the five HR courses, for example. And so combined total, you would have the 11 major courses for the double major. Students could do marketing and international business, for example, and between marketing and international business, um, there's actually a, a common course that doubles between both marketing and, and international business. So as a result, student that student would um, only have to do nine major courses between the marketing international business double major. And so for the double major, if um, two of the majors share a common course, up to one course can double count between the two majors. So unfortunately, accounting and HR do not share a common course, which is why um, students would have to do all six courses for accounting and then all five for HR. So the double major, how that would work is after the student is admitted into Scheidler, um, they're admitted with their primary major, either accounting or HR, for example, it doesn't matter. And students would have to meet certain requirements in order to officially declare that double major. And so what that means is a student must have first a 3.0 Manoa GPA, so they have to establish coursework at Manoa. Additionally, they have to take at least one required course from each major and then have a 3.0 in each major. And so once a student has all three GPAs, so 3.0 Manoa GPA, 3.0 within major number one, and 3.0 within major number two, then they can officially declare that double major. Okay, um, someone expressed wanting to concurrent major in marketing and psychology. So for this requirement, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, the minimum requirement to concurrent major with business and a major outside of business is a 3.25 Manoa GPA. So just be cognizant that when you do begin at Manoa, um, you're starting with your Manoa GPA being 0.0, .0 just because you haven't taken any, any courses at Manoa. So just be mindful that when you do start taking classes at Manoa, your Manoa GPA is comprised of only courses taken at Manoa. Okay, um, if you have more questions on the majors itself, um, a really great website is actually our shallow.hoy.edu slash majors website. And from there, you can find a lot more information on each major. Okay, so for example, for the marketing major, um, they go into a lot more definition and scope in terms of what marketing is, the different types of career in marketing, and most importantly, your major courses that you would need um, to fulfill this requirement. Um, and so the student who indicated an interest in data analytics, marketing is a great choice because a lot of the field has shifted towards the data analytics. So um, it's something that you'll definitely be able um, to accomplish with your interest in data analytics. All right, so as Chris mentioned, um, student organizations and student clubs are a great way to start networking, not only with other students, but with business professionals as well. Um, I know in this COVID time, there's no in-person activities, so a lot of the clubs have shifted to doing virtual online activities. And so these networking events also comprise of hosting um, interaction nights, um, mentor mentees, and so forth. So for more information, um, you can visit, again, our website. Um, if you're on the main page, all you have to do is go to the student life and then just the student clubs and organizations. And it will take you to this page here and it will actually list all of our clubs and their websites. Okay, so if you have more information on the accounting club, then you could visit the accounting club's website and get more information on that. <laughs> all right, so our BBA internship and career opportunities. Um, so Shadler does have a specific career and internships office located within our college. Um, for the BBA degree, internships are not required. Um, but they are highly recommended. Um, students can also take an internship for college credit and have it be applied towards a degree requirement. Okay, so normally what would happen pre-COVID is that we would have a career expo once a semester and so about 75 to 80 companies will come um, to our college in the, and table in the courtyard and in our hallways and it gives students the opportunity to browse different companies, different internship op opportunities and so forth in between their classes. Um, this past, this current semester, a few weeks ago, we had our virtual career expo um, where students were able to go into different sessions put on by different companies um, and try to get internships through them as well. 
Um, not only do we offer internships, but we also offer career advising, resume writing, and interview preparation. Um, and this service is free. <clears throat> Excuse me. This service is free and it is available to you post graduation as well. So if you find that after graduation, you you are in a career and you really maybe don't like that career and want to change, um, you can always refer back to our career and internships office um, for assistance. Um, this stat at the bottom here, this is pre-COVID um, for students who did participate in internships. So of the student population that did participate in internships, 88% um, of those graduating seniors were placed in full-time jobs three months after graduation. Um, and 90% of those were within their major. And so again, the internship is a great opportunity to start um, not only get an idea of the pos possible career that you might wanna pursue, um, but you can also start networking. So in an ideal situation, you're going to intern at the company that you may wanna work for. That company likes you enough and you like them enough where they will offer you a full-time position um, before you graduate. Okay, and if you want more information on our current internships office, again, on our website at this top career services for students. Okay, um, and then it'll take you to a lot more information on the services that the office offers. And then you can also join um, the Handshake um, application. And that's actually how you would um, apply for internships in the future. Okay, and these are just some examples of some of the companies that participate in internships with us. Um, normally what would happen is some of these companies would actually hold internships on on the Manoa campus at Shadler. At Shadler, we have a specific career and interview room where companies can use to interview students in between their classes. So rather than leaving the campus, going downtown, finding parking, doing your interview, coming back to campus and going to your next class. Um, all you would have to do is from your last class, go to our current interview room on campus, located in the Shadler building, do your interview and then go on to your next class. So these are just some of the companies that have participated um, with us in the past. Right. So in terms of financial support, um, the Shadler College of Business does offer a lot of scholarships. Um, so in the 2019 to 2020 academic year, we awarded approximately $1.2 million in scholarships to about 380 plus students. Um, and then, so a lot of these scholarships are again for the admitted students. So I'm gonna go over the admission requirements shortly, um, but students have to be admitted into the college first in order to be able to apply for these scholarships. To apply, for these scholarships, it is through the STAR scholarship system, which becomes available um, in December and closes in mid-February, and that is for the following academic year. Okay. In addition to the STAR scholarships, we also have um, what we call Business Night, and so this is an annual event in which students and business professionals um, partner and network. So it's a really extremely large dinner gathering and a student is partnered with a mentor for the entire night um, for to learn more about each other, learn more about um, career advice, life advice. And so a lot of students would actually also get internships this way as well. Um, other financial support also includes study abroad. So in the hopefully not too distant future um, when students are able to study abroad again. Um, there are two study abroad scholarships for the admitted business students. So one is for Asia and then one is for Europe. And again, students would have to be admitted into the College of Business in order to be eligible to receive these business scholarships. Um, other financial support includes scholarships outside of the college and outside of the university. Um, Shadler students are not limited to scholarships only within the College of Business. They're more than welcome to apply for external scholarships, such as through the UH Foundation or through other companies. Um, but these are the, the main forms of financial support for our um, College of Business students. And as Carissa mentioned, PACE is a great, great, great resource if you are interested in some type of entrepreneurial aspect or if you have a business venture in mind or maybe your family has a business that you plan to take over in the future. Um, this is a great opportunity to not only network with other entrepreneurial students, but you can also um, participate in their events and activities. So PACE, as Carissa mentioned, has the annual um, 
competition in which students submit their business plan. Um, PACE hosts a really intensive summer opportunity for students to jumpstart their business. Um, this is not a program of study or major itself. It's a resource for all students at, within the UH system. So you do not need to be a business student and you not need to be an entrepreneurship major in order to utilize the resources of PACE. All right, so in terms of the admission requirements for the BBA, uh, majors. The first one is 60 earned credits for a junior standing and these can all be completed at any of the CCs or at Maui College um, prior to transferring to Manoa and into the College of Business. The second requirement is a 2.5 cumulative GPA um, and then all students need a minimum grade of C or higher in these eight pre-business core courses. So the first one is a computer competency course. So at the CCs, it will be ICS 101. And then the remaining seven pre-business courses need a combined GP of 2.5. And again, everything would need to be with a minimum grade of C or higher. So the first one is English 100, English composition, which you have to take anyways. The second one is a calculus course. You only need one calculus course. And again, um, whichever calculus course that you take will depend on which campus you're on. Um, you do need at least one public speaking course. From the CCs, it will be speech or SP 151 or 251. The micro and macro econ um, is the same at, at all campuses. And for the accounting specifically, you can go ahead and disregard the 200 and 210. Um, for the CCs in Maui College, it will be accounting 201 and 202. So most important thing to keep in mind is wherever you do your first accounting course, be sure to do your second accounting course, um, hopefully in the same location. So for example, if you wanted to do your accounting courses at Manoa, then please do not do the 201 and then hope that you can do the second one at Manoa. Your accounting courses either have to be completely within Manoa or completely outside of Manoa. Okay, so just don't mix and match between Manoa and anything else and you'll be okay. Um, and so in terms of, sorry, in terms of admission, students are not ranked. If you individually meet the admission requirements on your own, then you can be admitted to Scheidler. Okay, so we do not rank you. There usually is not really a large cap. Um, admission each semester in fall and spring is pretty consistent. Um, there's obviously a, a lot more students being admitted in the fall just because of the sequencing. It just happens to be a majority of the students uh, third year, junior year that they begin, but we do admit for both fall and spring semesters. Some other BBA degree requirements that can be completed prior to admission, especially not at Manoa, um, and can be completed at the community college or at Maui College. Um, you can actually complete all of your general education requirements. So again, that pretty much encompasses getting your AA. You can also look into the second language or culture requirements. So for Scheidler, we have four different options for students to choose from. So students can go to this website, shiler.hoi.edu slash forms. You kind of halfway down, there's something called the language substitution list. And this actually lists the four options that students can pursue to fulfill their language requirement within Scheidler. Okay, so the most important thing to keep in mind is if you do decide to pursue the culture option, to make sure that the course that you take wherever you are transfers as a course equivalent to Manoa. So this really only comes into play for a certain amount of courses, just because the majority of the courses on this list are 300 or 400 level. Um, so you'd have to take them at Manoa. So the main ones really are going, or that I have seen are going to be any of the Hawaiian studies courses or history courses. Just make sure um, that they transfer as, for example, 284. It cannot transfer as an elective. Um, it will not fulfill the requirement. Um, other requirements that you can take um, before you transfer to Manoa to Shadler are some of your focus requirements. So the HAP is, an, is a good one that you can fulfill prior to coming to Manoa. Um, and you can also fulfill some of your writing intensives. You can do three of them um, because two of them can be any, any level. And then when you do come to Shadler, you can fulfill the two 300 plus level um, writing intensive requirements either within your major or outside of Shadler. Okay. And then lastly, students can also fulfill B-Law 200 as well as English 209. So I know at some 
um, CC's B Law is offered as a writing intensive. You can get almost all of them. English 209 is offered as a writing intensive, so that's already two. I've actually seen a few other admission requirements. I think it was ISIS 101. I forget which campus, but that also being offered as a writing intensive. So as long as it's offered as a writing intensive at the campus that you're taking it, it'll fulfill that writing intensive requirement. And then again, if you have any questions, you can always check with your um, counselor as well. Um, another resource that you can use um, as a transfer student is our degree requirements website. So you can download a copy of the B BBA requirements and you can work with your counselor to check off as many boxes as you can. You can pretty much check off everything on here except um, anything that's kind of upper division. Um, and so you can work with your counselor on there. And then obviously it just kind of lists the same thing that the handout does, um, but kind of a little more in-depth information um, on your degree requirements. Okay. Um, another new option that you can keep a lookout for or consider in the future is some of our graduate programs. So we do offer a Master of Science in Finance, Information Systems, and Marketing. And um, the really cool thing is that it is offered as a four plus one option for our Scheidler students. And what that means is you don't need to take the GMAT or GRE for, um, for entry into this program. Um, and the even better thing is that you can enroll in up to nine credits or three courses during your undergraduate, pay at the undergraduate tuition, and have it count towards your graduate program. Okay, so after you fulfill the BBA requirements, then you would only spend a year um, left for them fulfilling your remaining graduate options in the program. Um, and at the end, if it's if you're on if you're the traditional student, then it'll be in the five years you would have your undergraduate and graduate degree at once. Um, it's not something that you have to do, but just an option to consider um, as you go forward. All right, and I think that's it. So again, as Krista mentioned, follow us to Shadow School and Tim School. Um, and then this is my email and contact information. If you do have any questions, um, you can schedule an appointment with me through Star Balance. Um, I usually sometimes show up under um, Shadow Admissions. So, um, can look out for me there or if you go to this website it'll actually give you links um, for if you're not a current window student then you can use this link here to go ahead and schedule an appointment with me all right um that's all i had so i think there were some questions possibly yeah yeah claire thanks um so i think you got you got the one about marketing and psychology yeah Correct. Yes. And then yeah. if, if that student does have any more questions, they can um, always reach out to me as well. And we can kind of go over, a, go over a individual plan. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then um, let's see if we, let's see, did you get Susan's? If we decide and get selected to do a study abroad program, what classes would it replace? Yes. So if you are interested in studying abroad, I would highly, 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 highly recommend that you start researching now. Um, only because you would have to either study abroad through the MIX program or through the Study Abroad Center. So Shadler is not an abroad program. Students do not study abroad through the College of Business. They will study abroad either through MIX or through Study Abroad. So what has happened now is the past spring, this current fall, and this upcoming spring have unfortunately all been canceled. So those students who were going to go abroad are now like on the in the queue or like on the wait list and they're going to get priority. So if whatever semester the study abroad does open up and students can go abroad again, it's going to be a little bit different than how it was before in terms of um, being able to go abroad, whether you're eligible to get into the program. Um, mainly this would involve mix because it's it's a specifically an exchange program. So a student from Manoa would have to be exchanging places with someone from that university. So for example, Korea, South Korea is extremely popular. So if there are a dozen students who wanna to go to Korea, but maybe only five students from Korea who want to come to Manoa, then only five students from Manoa can go to Korea. And if those five are taken by the, students on the wait list who are supposed to go this fall or upcoming spring, then it pushes everyone else down. So highly, highly recommend that you start doing research now just to get an idea of what their admission requirements are and how you can apply to study abroad. After you've been accepted is when you would hopefully do your start a little bit more class planning. You can use the Scheidler International Exchange page, so, so scheidler.hoy.edu slash international to get an idea of some of our partner schools um, what that has is pre-approved course equivalencies. I think some of those do expire either this year or the, or the next year, um, but hopefully those will get renewed. Um, 
And then what you can also read are student blogs and experiences, the current and past shadow students who have gone abroad. Um, but the classes that you would be taking there would be dependent upon one, where you go, what your major is, because you can't take accounting classes abroad because it's the international accounting versus American accounting. So if you're an accounting major, you go abroad, you will get zero accounting courses towards your BBA degree. Um, so it's gonna depend on where you go, what major you're in, and then lastly, what classes that university is actually offering for their abroad or their international exchange students. Okay, awesome. Good, I think we got that one. Um, and then Jamie had another question. Is the honors program connected with Shiloh in any way? Um, it doesn't have a, a track like some of the other programs do. We do have a few Shiloh students who do continue into the honors program, into the upper division honors program, um, but it's, it's very few. Um, I don't know if on our page we took down the honors section, but there used to be an honors section um, on our website somewhere. Um, but you could check with the honors program to see. It's usually if you plan to do research um, with one of our Shidler faculty, just as it would culminate with your um, upper division honors project. Um, but I guess to answer your question, no, it is not. There's not a track built in with Shidler. Great. Awesome. And then um, she had another follow-up question specifically about a course, B-Law 200. Yes, so um, that course is required. required. Yes. Is required. Correct. Yes, okay, perfect. Awesome, thank you. And then it looks like, um, Jamie, again, is it possible to get a MSMM at the same time as an MBA? You can maybe um, define what that is too for folks that don't know. Yes, so the MSMM program is the Master's of Science in Marketing Management, and the MBA is just the Master's of Business Administration. So technically, I believe it is possible. You'd be applying to two separate degree programs at once, and you would be in a lot of classes. Um, what you could do is probably reach out to the MSMM director, um, Dr. Miao. Um, she's the program director for MSMM. And then for the MBA, there are different MBA programs that we offer, either the global MBA or the executive MBA. So it would be dependent upon which program that you'd want to pursue. And then it'd be up to each respective program they both have to agree for you to do both at the same time. So um, if it is something that you are interested in doing, I would probably contact them now um, or soon, maybe when you start your first semester in Shidler um, to get an idea. Because if they say no, then you might want to figure out what should go first or better yet, why might you want to do both MSMM and MBA? Is that going to further your career goals or is doing one sufficient to kind of land you in the same place as, as getting both? Because it will be um, a little expensive to do both. Yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome, thank you. Um, and then I guess just like a general question, then we have one, Q, one or two Q and A's um, to get through as well. Um, if you could just maybe kind of give some context into what's the difference between Manoa business versus Hilo business versus West Oahu business, kind of what are the main differences between the programs at the different campuses? So the main difference, I think Shidler has the most admission requirements to get in. Usually if students don't want to do calculus, I'll refer them to West Oahu. Um, usually West Oahu in the past had more online courses and were um, a little more flexible for obviously the non-traditional student. A lot of our Shidler classes were during the traditional working hour day usually in person. Um, now for the spring, it is going to be online. I'm not sure how it will look once we can get past post-COVID times, whether they would keep some in-person or online, but um, I know a majority of the faculty before really preferred the in-person. I know a lot of the students actually have preferred in person because not only can you actually interact with your classmates, but you can better interact with your professor 
and other things like that. Um, so I think post COVID, a lot of our classes will resume to being in person just because it gives the ability for more interaction. Um, and again, a lot of the classes have a lot of group work, so a lot more um, in that. But other than the other differences, HELOS program is also a CSB accredited. I'm not too sure what UH West Oahu's accreditation is, but I, I don't, it's not the ACSB. Um, other than that, I don't know too much else about HELO and West Oahu um, compared to Shidler, but that's just usually. No worries. You don't need to. You're the expert at Childer, right? So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, and then I guess Lori had a question about um, if those major areas were able to be minors. Right. No. So unfortunately for the minor, the business, we do offer a business minor, but it's only going to give you a really brief introduction to business. So students cannot minor in finance, minor in marketing, minor in management. You can only pursue those as a major. The business minor is really just an intro to marketing, intro to management, and then three electives. You can choose from a stats, information systems, econ, finance, um, accounting, but pretty much it's not going to give you specific finance or specific marketing courses. You would have to complete those through the major only. Okay, awesome. Um, and then kind of a question about the management information systems. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about where that came from? Because that sounds new. Yes, so this major has been around for quite some time. It's just for whatever reason, it's not as popular as like marketing or accounting. It might just be because people don't really know about it. So I can answer your question wonderfully. Um, so management information systems is kind of like uh, ICS, information computer science, without all of the calculus, physics, programming, and numbers. So it gives you the business aspect of computers, basically. So you're not going to be the IT help when you have to reboot someone's computer or their Microsoft Word is not loading. It's more um, in depth than that. So if it, so you'd be taking classes in um, database systems and networking, security, you will do a little bit of a programming, but not like anything in depth where you're gonna like be like how it is in the movies. It's really just um, an overview um, of how to troubleshoot some um, issues. And the good thing about MIS is that it's applicable to almost any career or every, basically every company needs some type of MIS, CIS person. So if you wanna work in a bank, there's IT audit positions, there's, you can, it can lead into business analyst positions. Um, if you're wanting to work in Silicon Valley, then this major is gonna give you both the business aspect as well as the kind of technical side of computers. Um, so the degree or the career pathway is really great in this field. Um, for the MIS, major, it can transition wonderfully into the MSIS, the Master of Science in um, Information Systems pathway to give you even more of a hands-on approach. Um, but for a lot more in-depth information and to read about the different courses that you would take, um, I would just highly recommend going to that website, shalai.hard.edu.majors, clicking on the Management Information Systems, um, and it'll give you like It'll list all the courses that you would need. It'll give you a lot more information on um, on the major as well. Yeah, but in a nutshell, it's like computer science without the science part. Awesome, perfect. Yeah. Okay, um, and then I think we, we can talk about dual enrollment a little bit with this next question. Um, so for the second language slash culture requirement, will I be able to fulfill that course at a community college while being a Manoa student? Yes, so the most common that I see is if you start a language at the CCs, it's, it's usually recommended to um, continue the language at the CCs. So you're more than welcome to like enroll in your business classes in Scheidler and then continue your language at the CCs. Um, the only thing that you would need to be aware of is if you are receiving financial aid and you're not enrolled full-time at Manoa, then you would need to complete a CC enrollment form to certify any courses that you're taking not at Manoa so that your financial aid is not rescinded or recalculated. Um, but yes, you are able to take courses at both Scheidler and the CCs. Um, and then Jamie had another question. Does it include stats like R? Jamie, I'm not really sure what you're trying to ask here. Claire, do you know what that question uh, would be related to? <laughs> like R&D, like research and development. Um, so the marketing, 
Oh, oh, like oh. courses that you're taking in the MIS. Does it include a stats course? It does not include a stats course. I think that's, that's what the question was. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, all students in Shadler have to do a business stats. It's required. Business new time is required for all students. So regardless of your major, you will have to do a business stats, but marketing will go a lot more in depth into stats. It, it actually uses biz 310 is actually one of the prereqs to one of the marketing classes that you need to take. So marketing will capitalize on business statistics. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yay. So Jamie, the marketing one of all the ones, um, with data analytics is the best one. Um, yeah, I mean, MIS could give you a few, but depending on what you want to do with your marketing in psych, um, assuming you pursue a PhD for psych, since that's kind of what you need in that field, um, marketing would give you the best, um, but you're always welcome to take some MIS courses if you want, just for fun, if you have free time in your schedule, maybe. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Really good advice. Uh, I think we are kind of pal with questions. I, d I do have one I get from some students that think about business. Um, do they have to get an MBA these days, right? Do you have to? No. So you don't have to pursue a graduate degree. Um, really what I recommend to students. So usually students either really want to pursue business but they don't know why <laughs> or it's a plan b because they can't think of anything else and their parents said business is a good fallback option but while those are while there are no wrong options what you should consider is your career goal like what do you want to do what do you want to be when you grow up basically and from that if you can actually find that job posting somewhere or find someone in that job look at what they've done previously or look at the minimum qualifications for that position. For a lot of MIS um, career paths, you don't need an MBA, what you need is certifications. So look at the different careers that you want to pursue and work your way backwards. Do you actually need a business degree to pursue that career? Or how will the business degree facilitate your progress in getting to that career goal? So business is, yes, a great fallback option. It's very common. It's wonderful. But at the same time, is it going to assist you in any way, right? You don't want to have graduated and realized, oh, no, this is not what I wanted to do. I, I actually really loved history and art. I wanted to do that. So, you know, work backwards a little bit um, to kind of, ensure that what you're doing in your undergraduate career is going to facilitate your actual career goals. Absolutely, yeah. Begin with the end in mind, right? <laughs> awesome, that's great. Um, let's see, does anyone have any other questions uh, for Claire? That was really good advice to kind of end on is kind of look at career stuff and backtrack from there what degrees or what credentials are required for that path. Um, so yeah, so I guess we're kind of nearing the end, folks. If you guys have any other questions, pop them in the Q&A or chat um, before we close out. And then just a reminder, um, as Lori is reminding us in the chat, go ahead and fill out the short evaluation uh, for the session today so we can continue to offer these for students. Lori, go ahead. Oh, shoot, you're, you're muted right now, Lori. Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, now we got it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Chris and Claire. Um, we'll be sort of hanging here for the next five minutes. Um, Chris and Claire will be here until 1.15. So you can go ahead and ask away. I, I see one question, Claire. That yeah, might we be had a question about chat. recording. Um, so we, we have been recording this session, so we'll provide a recording of this afterwards if you want to pull um, any of those nuggets from all the awesome slides that we went through today, um, there will be an option to circle back with that information later. Um, you can email my email address at jluton, um, and I'll put it in the chat, um, and we can share the recordings with you. Thanks, everyone. I think Jamie had another question. Jamie, I have no idea whether it's possible to pursue the PhD in psych at the same time as MSMM. Um, 
If you haven't met with Psych yet, I would probably highly recommend doing so because based on what you might want to do with Psych could um, influence kind of what you do career or degree ladder wise. Um, yes, I actually have no idea. You'd probably want to reach out to the psych department um, to see as well as MSMM because I have no idea. Thank you so much. And then before folks leave, I just wanted to um, put a plug in for our next um, uh, session in the Transfer Tuesday series. So um, our next session is going to be on November 10th. It's a Tuesday um, and it's going to be with the Peace Studies and Peace Corps Prep Program as well as the College of Social Science. So I hope you folks can join us for that if you're interested in those programs.